How are we doing, folks? Welcome back to the Nightmare Cabin. We're going to be doing a couple of album reviews today. Uh, first up, we've got the brand new album from At The Gates, The Nightmare Of Being. I've got the uh, special edition Digipack book here, uh, which comes with a bonus live CD. But it's uh, not so much a live album. You've got a couple of... It's live at Roadburn, which I think is a festival, live in Stockholm, live in San Francisco. And I think what you've got is a few orchestral songs on there as well. But we will get into that as we uh, go forward. Um, here's the uh, hype sticker there. Uh, what do we say? There's not a lot on here, actually. I always keep them, though, for some reason. Uh, yeah, live, bonus, live, nine, lot. There they are. Start that again, shall we? Nine bonus live tracks. There we go. Uh, beautiful artwork. Uh, I really like that painting, but it doesn't. The CD doesn't do much justice. So maybe it'd be worth investing in a uh, in a vinyl copy, but not on my limited budget. Uh, yeah, you got the full painting there. But then as you go through the artwork, let's give it. Uh, as you go through the booklet, this is the thing. I'll get a light, and then here we go. You've you've got an opposite end of the artwork there at the back, and then basically as you go through the lyrics, you get like close ups. So see that the uh, people there, well they're in the corner there. You get the idea, and so on and so forth. But yeah, I think these. Uh, these paintings are ca capture the atmosphere of the album really well. Yeah, uh, especially the blue one. It's nice and melancholic. And uh, you got band photos there. Cool goblin T-shirt there, worn by Thomas. And then you've got pictures there of uh, people recording with violins, violas, cellos, flutes, and even a saxophone. Yeah, they will get into that in a minute. It's a bit of a uh, curveball the band have thrown at us this time around. It seems that the, uh, they didn't want to just do another death metal album. They, uh, It seems they're aware of their legacy. They're aware of... Um, the problem with At The Gates, and this isn't At The Gates' problem, really, or their fault in any way. Oh, Andy LaRock from uh, King Diamond. Uh does a uh, lead guest lead track on the opening um, song as well, the uh, Spectre of Extinction. But um, he did a guest solo on Slope of the Soul as well. So, but uh, I was, one thing I did want to look up, I was wondering if the if the saxophone player was the guy that did the saxophone on Ishan's uh, solo albums, because this has a you could it's not quite all the way there but in terms of the feeling you get and the way they're expanding their sound think what Ishan from Emperor did on his solo albums um, who was the guy that did the saxophone on that one album he did he, he turned up and did a lot of like, where the guitar solo would be this guy turned up and did a lot of saxophone he was from a he was from a band as well I think they were called Shining but not you got a black metal band called Shining as well haven't you but um Black Jazz was the album they called. I wonder if that was the same guy, but I'm not sure if it is or not. So we'll uh, go past that. But yeah, I was a little bit, you know, the legacy around at the gates with Slaughter of the Soul and all the rest of it. I was there when they reformed. I saw them at Bloodstock in 2006. It seems like a fucking lifetime ago. Um, it was great to see them live and hear those songs from sort of the soul done live because that album had become legendary at that point and then there was the curiosity of whether you know that they could pull off a new album and uh at war with reality personally i mean i i, I did go into this in my previous video where i went through the band's back catalog but if this is your first video i'll just give you some background but if you want to know my thoughts on the band's back catalog yeah please do go back and watch uh let's talk about at the gates let's get some light and uh, 
Yeah, I, they pulled it off. I mean, that album definitely grew on me, and uh, the album that came after it, the uh, To Drink From The Night itself, I kind of listened to it enough to get a review of it done, and then kind of left it on the shelf. I only really investigated it and gave it a second try whilst going into this album and listening back. But yeah, on this album, they definitely this they definitely throw a curveball in. They, they this isn't just another at the gates album. They're not just going for the motions. They they consciously have opened up their sound on this and there's it's still an at the gates album. It's still very it's identifiably a at the gates album and it feels like an at the gates album but there's just enough differences and just enough not experimentation that's not the right word because experimentation basically just means you ain't got a fucking clue what you're doing um they've added elements into their sound and they've just added it enough to make you take note make you go hmm that's interesting but not enough to put you off it's not enough to make you go what am i listening to here and i think when you do change a sound or introduce something into your sound you have to find that that goldilocks medium the the porridge has to be just right i think and yeah this is just different enough to to make you raise an, an eyebrow but still at the gates enough to keep you going so this is a really fresh innovative um take on what at the gates is and what you think it should be and yeah i think this is was it was necessary it was definitely needed i don't i think if we got another melodic death metal album um from at the gates i think it would have just it would have been it would have pleased those who are in for the long run but i think casual listeners it would have just been yeah here we go it's just another day sort of thing and uh that's what I was just saying a minute ago. The problem with At The Gates, and the, and it's not At The Gates' fault, is so many people have ripped off their sounds that it's not really special anymore. It's uh, I think that happened a little bit with the new album, um, At War Of Reality, when they first reformed. It was like, yeah, the, you've split up and then the world's just caught up and now you're here. It's everyone else just sounds like you you know it's a bit of an odd it was an odd one it was like you you had to remember that this was the bands that so many bands had taken that sound from i mean even in you know when you had your kill switch engages in your darkest hours and what was known as metal core and uh so many bands took the gothenburg sound and ran with it and of course like bands like in flames had gone mainstream but yeah this this keeps the this has a real dark melancholy but strangely beautiful feel to it um it's not black metal in any way but the atmosphere that black metal certain aspects of black metal anyway do try to conjure up is conjured up wonderfully here i think the biggest um disadvantage no not, not so much that but the fact that it's been released in the middle of the summer because <laughs> this is very much a winter album i think i think this is a cool album to listen to at night especially um maybe as the evening's coming in sky goes all different colors and whatnot there's a uh yeah this could be listened to whilst going on a uh a scenic walk if you will especially with what we're going for at the moment. A lot of people are going out to get their exercise and going for long walks. I know things are slightly coming back now, but um, that's what a lot of people were doing. They found they were going for walks and um, sticking the headphones in and taking in an album. And this would have been a really good album for that time. Um, yeah, there's a there's a winter feel to it. And I think, yeah, this, I'll, be listen, I'll be looking to dig this out um, when the winter does come round. Not that I'm wishing it to come anytime soon. Um, yeah, the uh, Spectre of Extinction um, opens up with a nice... There's a nice little introduction and then the song kicks in. Many other bands would have just separated it and made it a separate track, but 
they decided not to, which is fair enough. Um, it opens up with like a on like on like acoustic guitar, and then the riff goes round again, and then you get the riff, you get the idea. This nice big majestic opening to the album, and then it just goes into the death metal. You know, it's vintage at the gates on that first track. Um, beautiful riff during the chorus. Really nice, melodic, catchy riff. I mean, to say something, making a note that something's melodic in At The Gates is a bit of a dumb idea. You know, everything they do is melodic. Um, but they do. They they always, they were that band that just perfectly encapsulated a melodic riff that was also heavy and sinister and dark sounding. It was kind of, you had to do one or the other and At The Gates just captured it perfectly. Let's wait for this camera to focus a bit more. And um, yeah, The Paradox, you would have seen a video for that by now if you were a fan. But yeah, just again, just wonderful, melodic, brilliant death metal. Um, what was the other one called? The Nightmare of Being, the uh, title track. Clean and haunting in the verses. There's like these clean, um, clean guitars with um, not so much spoken word, but he's Thomas is still sort of growling and shouting, but he's keeping it back so it kicks in during the uh, chorus, and then it goes into this nice little slow bit, and then he just screams, The Nightmare of Me, and then it just kicks in big time into this beautiful, slow, Sabbath-y, you know, and a uh, nice, big, doomy, slow riff, and it's just really climatic. But then... So so far so good, yeah. You're 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 slowly immersed in the album, and then Gates of Cirrus. That's when things switch, and you're like, "Whoa, this isn't just another at the Gates album." I'm listening to something a little bit different here, and I'm uh, just trying to get the camera to focus a bit. And uh, and uh, yeah, that that's a beautiful song. It really is. That's when your uh, your ears perk up. And you go, "Wow, this is certainly di something different." And um, again, it's just really haunting. It's mellow. It's beautiful. You've got this fantastic, almost bluesy like solo, and it's followed by a saxophone. Um, the uh, yeah, it just there's times in this album where you feel like you are walk watching like a an opera or a, or a you know, some gothic symphony, you know. And um, you could see this album being done live with an orchestra. You know, I've, I keep saying that now, Maiden Cast, how much I want them, them to do that. But I think it could be done. I really do. But yeah, Gate of Sirius is definitely a standout. And that's one where you, you do take note where this is something um, certainly... They're definitely expanding now. Uh, where is it? Touched by the White Hands of Death. Another great track. Um, that pretty much goes full on orchestra. Like you got full on orchestra on that one. In it, and it's not just strings just blaring in your face like some metal bands do. I mean, this actually feels like a score to a film. Like you, you these could be opening credits to an to a film. You know, like an interview with a vampire or something like that. But again, you have got a lovely. Um, it's beautiful and orchestral at the beginning. And you really do think, wow, this is fucking really cool. And then, boom, just kicks in again. Um, abstract Enthroned, I think, is the track. Let me get that right. The Abstract Enthroned. Uh, scathing to begin with. Uh, <clears throat> almost a bit of black metal at the beginning, that opening riff. Excuse me one sec. And... Um, Another big orchestral part in that, um, leading up to a uh, nice big climax at the end with again with awesome solo. Uh, they've got a new guitarist. I don't think he. This is his second album with the band, I believe. What's the guy's name? Um, is it Martin Larson? No, that's the. He's been in there from day one, hasn't he? Who's the other guy? Uh, Jonas. Stahlhammer, I think that is. I can't. <laughs> uh, this is his second album with the band. Um, he did the last album to drink the night itself, but I think he's fit the band with a glove, like a glove. 
Um, he's really gone in. He really, he's become an asset to the band, definitely. Um, he's in the lurking fear as well, Thomas's other band. So that's worth taking note for. Cosmic pessimism. Now, this is where things really get weird. Um, that's the one where it's like do 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 and then they all do 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 it's like this jazzy weird kind of thing. And Thomas is doing this like spoken word passage over it. Like the the most most of the lyrics are spoken word. There's and then it comes to the chorus where it kicks in a bit and he's like cosmic pessimism the last humor the last cosmic pessimism the last refuge of hope. Um, and when I interviewed Thomas a few weeks back, he was basically saying he was looking into pessimism and how pessimism, if you really go to the bottom of it, 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 it can be positive in a in a weird way. As long as you, so you basically start off going, you know, we don't matter, life doesn't matter, da 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 da, and you get all pessimistic. But then once you embrace it, it's like that's fine. I can I can use that and know that my time is limited, and I know this might not necessarily matter but i can make it matter now sort of thing and it wasn't he said like it's not something i necessarily agreed with but i thought it was a cool subject to explore um yeah he, he oh god what's the guy's name they do collaborate a little bit with a philosopher as well in the lyrics um basically about the human state and that's what like the the title the nightmare of being comes from it's a uh the curse really of consciousness having a conscious and knowing being aware of your mortality and your legacy and all the rest of it with what comes with being a human um <laughs> yeah that's the nightmare of being is what the title goes and you can dive into the lyrics yourself and explore that little subject but yeah i i'll be honest i wasn't really in the mood for a new at the gates album i pretty much had that itch scratched i thought the band were pretty much done because it's been a few years since the last album um when was the last one well not that long ago really 2018 um i thought they kind of moved on to other projects and it was nice that the the reunion was done that curiosity was settled and they had a couple of albums under their belt and that was that so when a new a gates album was on the horizon i was like yeah okay you know obviously i jumped at the chance at interviewing thomas so and when I first listened to it, it was kind of like, yeah, okay. You know, and then I just kept listening to it. And um, Ricardo, the uh, Metal Legion, he just said, no, stick with it. It's a grower. I went, oh, okay. And I played it a few more times. And that's when all these little things started sticking out to me a bit more. And, you know, the orchestral stuff, I, I didn't really take note of it at first. But, yeah, there's some there's some real beautiful details on this. Where, and it's, it, it definitely... It rewards repeated listens. It's really worth really spending a good week or two with this album, listening to it once a day and really immersing yourself in it. And yeah, they've really they've really done something special here and they've really re reinvented themselves. And a band's this far into their career with the back catalogue they already have, that, al that, that alone is a massive achievement, you know. So yeah, this is definitely a, a major addition contribution to the band's back catalog and definitely worth checking out and if you are you know if you have checked out about the gates lately if you are sitting there saying slaughter of the soul is as good as it's going to get now think again this is a this is a mature take on what at the gates is and what could be and if this is a sign of things to come then yeah we're in for very interesting times indeed hopefully this is like the start of a new era in the band and um I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, long may it continue. Um, possibly album of the year. I can. Uh, it's definitely going to be in the list. Yeah, if I hear ten albums that are better than this between now and December, then we're in for a very good year. Um, but yeah, this is definitely. This has definitely impressed me. Definitely, it, it was it was a nice surprise, an unexpected surprise, and over time every listen it just gets better and better so yeah check it out this isn't just another album it's worth it's definitely worth digging into there's more going on so yeah i'd i'd definitely give this a nine out of ten and who knows how i feel 
by the end of the year. So thanks for watching. As always, if this is your first video, welcome to the channel. Welcome aboard. Um, if you feel like supporting the channel in any way, please, all I ask is uh, just give us one of them and subscribe if you feel you want to see more. That really does help the channel out. And yeah, take care of yourselves. I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching.